Hey friends, Silvano here from RuffinStudio.com and today I'm going to share three ways on how you can shape your kick so it fits better together with the bass line, with the low end, which make your low end a little bit more balanced on your raw minimal or micro house tracks. We do this with only three simple tools, which is EQing, simple EQing on the bass line, on the kick, with uh, transient shaping, dynamic EQing. So let's jump in. Let's play the track. So this is the after. My first intention when I first listened to this mix was I wanted to create more clarity. Also I had the feeling that the low end could need some work. Let's uh, check the bass line, this uh, very driving uh, mid bass line and this uh, kick. So this is the kick. And my intention was that the kick and uh, this bass line fighting for the same frequency spot. So my intention was to create more space inside this bass line. So the kick has more punch and cuts through better in the mix. First tip is just use simple EQing on the bass line and on the kick. So to show you that, just quickly play the, those two tracks together. This is just plain. And now I'm switching in just EQ on the bass line and on the kick. And I'm going back three, two, one. And I have the feeling just with those two little EQing tricks, we already created a little bit more, not punch, but yeah, it's very subtle, but I have the feeling that the attack of the kick comes through a little bit better. What I like to do on the kicks is uh, cutting around 30 hertz to cut out the very lows on a kick, because most often, it's no need for having such low frequency in the kick and I'm using quite a very steep cut and then um, also what I did is cutting on the top and I got this little tip from my mentor from mastering classes if we listen again to this kick now I'm unmuting the, the top end cut and now listen to the low end of the kick it makes it a little bit more punchy. Listen, three, two, one. And I have the feeling if I cut on the, on the top end, it makes the low end a little bit tighter sounding. And again, just those two little cuts on the kick only already created a little bit more togetherness just for the kick let's jump to the bass line i love that bass line and what i did here is i just cut out a little bit of the very lows on this um, bass line And again, I cut around 41 hertz because 
I thought this mod down there is not needed for this purpose of the baseline. And now let's have a listen with both together again. So this is with both EQing. Now I'm switching back to the unprocessed one without EQing. And you can hear or you should be able to hear that so that the kick is cutting a tiny little bit better through the bass line so it works better a little bit it's more harmonic in my opinion let's see what i did as a second secondly in my chain so what i did on the kick as a second step was using a transient shaper so let's listen again to just the, the kick with the EQing. And what I was using was the kilohertz transient shaper. I like this because it's uh, very simple to use uh, transient shaper. Uh, let's have a listen. First to mention, sorry, uh, if I listen to this kick, I have the feeling it sounds a little bit boomy around the uh, Let's quickly check that around this area here. All right. And what I wanted to do with the transient shaper is to take out a little bit of the boominess. If you listen to, to this uh, kick, and with this pump button I can actually take out some of the boob boominess something like that right and what I also did was creating a little bit more attack with this transient shaper and just just listen back with the kick and then let's tweak the attack so yeah third but not least I shape this sustain a little bit let's uh, listen back again and again I had the feeling if I just turn down the sustain of the kick a tiny little bit um, the boominess goes back a little bit let's listen again make a uh, AB So this is the transient shaper part, let's now go to the baseline. So let's talk about the baseline. As I mentioned before, I wanted to create a little bit more punch and space for the kick. And I was thinking, again, the kick was fighting for the same frequency spot. This area, right? We took out some boominess, but now we also want to create some more space for the kick in a certain frequency area. So, what I did was I was using a dynamic EQ with a sidechain input. So, we trigger with the kick the EQ, right? And let me explain quickly how this works against the uh, normal compression or sidechain compression. So normal sidechain compression works with uh, volume, right? So let's imagine you stand in front of a DJ mixer 
and you know the volume fader everyone does so let's assume every time the kick hits you turn down the volume right so this is how a normal compressor works with the sidechain input it just turns the volume down every time the kick hits so with the, the waves factory uh, track spacer which is a dynamic EQ with the sidechain input it works on the frequency range instead of a uh, just simple volume right so let's go back to this example of the DJ fader or <laughs> DJ mixer sorry instead of turning down the volume fader of that DJ mixer you actually turn down a certain frequency pot on that fader right you know those three band EQing pioneer mixer whatever it is and every time the kick hits instead of turning down the volume you turn that knob to make some space so what we are doing here is we make space for the kick with this track spacer from Waves Factory let's make an AB like always right so without just listen to the kick listen if it comes through the baseline better if it hits better so let's play close your eyes if you need to to really focus found is it comes better through the, the, the baseline but it also creates a, a tiny little bit more groove and let me explain this uh, track spacer plugin so with the low cut I actually can say the lowest frequency spot where it should work and the, the highest so we we limit this range right and I wanted to work it only on this problem frequency which is the lower mids so we can see that it always works in that frequency area when the kick is playing and I have the feeling the kick is more constant hammering right dang, dang. and without this plugin it soaks in it comes back uh, again but then it goes away again and this is how we we created some space with just this plugin Can you hear what I mean? It goes some somehow the kick tack 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 you know but with the plugin we make some space and it constantly goes tack 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 the kick is there to drive the track right so uh in my opinion this helps with this plugin and let's make an AB again Everything is muted. Let's turn it back in. So, yeah, that's how I do it. And last but not least. I'm adding in some little attack 
some little punch with the uh, Slate Digital Virtual Mix Rack and I really love this uh, what is it custom series equalizer um, adding just at 60 Hertz which really brings out that kick sponge a little bit can you hear that really brings out a tiny little bit of this uh, kick of this punch a little bit and all what we did was just adding a really small amount at 60 Hertz and then again this is another crazy plugin that I love it's custom series lift also from slate right And it brings back a little bit of the body part. I know we took out some, but I thought the kick sounds a little bit weaker now. So I thought maybe I should add in some spot, some bottom end again, but in a cleaner way, I guess. So let's make let's make an AB again. So to sum this up, step number one, EQ on the kick and the bass line. Step number two, use a transient shaper on the kick if you need to. Step number three, uh, sidechain EQing, dynamic EQing on the bass line with the kick as a sidechain input. And step number four, if you need to, if the kick is too weak, adding a little bit at 60 Hertz on the kick and if it still is too weak to kick, um, adding a little bit more of the bottom end, maybe 30 to 40 hertz again, or fatten it up with the tape also will help. Last but not least, let's make a quick AB with the uh, baseline and the kick. I turn off the whole processing now. Turning it in. Out. Without. Where's the kick? We need the kick, right? And so yeah, those are the four steps. I hope this helped. If yes, I have a little gift for you, which is my free seven step low end checklist. It's really packed with all that kind of stuff. Um, it's like a reference guide for you with all the tools, the plugins I mentioned here, it's all packed in a PDF. So whenever you're stuck with mixing low end, you can reference back to the PDF and hopefully it helps. Go and download it on my homepage. I add it in the description. And so yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.